Hey traders, it's Brandon from Amphibian Trading. It's been a little bit over a year since I made my last video showing you how you can replicate a MarketSmith chart in TradingView. Since then, I've become an expert in PineScript, which is the language that TradingView uses to create custom indicators. I'm one of the few trusted Pine programmers actually endorsed by TradingView, and in that time, I have done my best to recreate some of the key features of MarketSmith and make them available in TradingView for free. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can replicate a MarketSmith chart in TradingView with these new updated indicators. Now, before we do, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, and then we're going to get right into it. Okay, so we're going to start by creating a new chart layout. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just make sure that we have our candles or bars. We're going to set them to bars. That's what Market Smith uses. I'm going to right click anywhere in the chart, go to my settings. From here, a couple things you want to make sure you have checked and unchecked. You want to have this color based on previous close checked. You want this HLC bars checked, and you want to make sure this thin bars is not checked. From there, you can change your colors. Market Smith uses blue and red, so that's what we're going to use in this video. I'm going to go ahead and remove the default volume indicator as well. So now that we have our chart setting with the bars and the bars correctly with the thicker bars and just the high low close, let's get into some of the indicators that we're going to use. Okay, so the first indicator we're going to go ahead and add to our chart by selecting indicators at the top left here is going to be base finder. Now, I created this and what this one does is it replicates the pattern recognition in MarketSmith. So you can see here, as soon as I put that on the chart, we see these green lines and a couple flags. We see these boxes and some circles. It's a lot of stuff. I have a full video explaining what Base Finder does and all the different settings in it. But at a very basic level, this brings the pattern recognition part of MarketSmith over to TradingView. So here we have a double bottom base. If I hover over the start bar of any of the bases, it's going to give you the base information with the depth, the length, the pivot, and what stage it's at. So this is a really cool feature, and this is one of the main features of MarketSmith. So make sure you add this to your chart. From there, the next indicator that we want to add is the price data label. Now, the way this works is similar to MarketSmith. If you click on a bar, it's going to show you information about that bar, the high, the low, how far away it is from certain moving averages, the volume run rate, stuff like that. So what I did here is I brought that same functionality. Instead of clicking on a bar though, you're just gonna hover over the high and you can see this little window pops up. It has the date, the high, low, close, the percent change of that bar. It gives you the closing range, the volume, the volume run rate, and then the distance to a few moving averages. Now, if I go into the settings here, you can select which moving averages you wanna use. You can also have four different moving averages on a daily chart two on the weekly. So I'm on a weekly time frame. If I go into the daily, you can see this automatically adjusts now and there's four different moving averages rather than just the two. Next up, we are going to get a relative strength line on our chart. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to type in Webby and you'll see this actually brings up a bunch of different indicators that Mike Webster created and uses. But the one we're looking at here is this quick and grateful dead RS. And what this does, it creates a relative strength line, which is the blue line with two moving averages, which is the purple and the green. In here, you can go ahead and change these settings. You can change which index you want to compare it to, the color, the width. Also, you can change the moving averages length and the type, whether it's an SMA or an EMA. You can also just change the opacity to get rid of them if that's not something you want to see on your chart. The other thing this indicator does, Mike Webster shared some strategies he uses where the relative strength line crosses above or below its moving averages. So this can plot those out as well if you turn on these symbols. By default, I just have them off, but if you load the indicator onto your chart, they'll be on to start. So you'll have to turn those off if you didn't want to see them. So let's just reset these to the default. And you can see, here we go. We get those different moving averages and the different crossing symbols. From there, we are going to go ahead and add a volume indicator, and this one is called index volume. So what this does is typical volume. It creates the run rate similar to you see in MarketSmith, so you can keep track of if volume is running above average or if it's running below average. What I really like about this, though, is if I go to a daily chart and I go over to an index like the NASDAQ composite, 
you'll notice that we have these diamonds on the bars. And what those are are follow through days and distribution days. So a follow through day is a gain of one and a quarter percent or more on volume increasing from the previous day. You'll see those with those green diamonds. And then we also have distribution days, which are marked by these red diamonds. So something I really like about this indicator is this volatility based accumulation days. What this is, this is something that was taught in market school and it takes the past 200 days and looks at the size of each of the updates. And then based on the average of those, it creates the threshold that is needed for a follow through day. So I can turn that on or off. Personally, I like to leave it on because it takes into account that volatility factor. Another thing this indicator does is it shows distribution clusters, which is when we get four or more distribution days in a rolling eight day period. So you can see these backgrounds that are shaded red. Those are when we have distribution clusters. All right, the next indicator we're going to look at is called market Smith daily market indicators. And what this does is it replicates the market breadth data in market Smith. So, you can see we have the number of advancers and their volume, decliners, their volume, the unchanged in the volume, and then we have new highs and lows. So I can go to the settings here, and this is the index data for the NASDAQ. If you want to switch that over to the NYSE, you'll see how this changes. And then we have these plots. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hide this table. I'm going to go back to the NASDAQ just for this. So we have four different things that this indicator plots. It has the advanced decline line, which is on by default. We have the overbought and oversold indicator. Then we have the 10 day average of the up and down volume. And lastly, we have the 10 day average of new highs and new lows. So you can select which index you want to use that on. And that replicates the market breadth pages in market Smith. Okay. So the last thing we need to really make this look like a market Smith chart is going to be our earnings and sales dashboards. So there's, a couple of these already out there that are really high quality. So I didn't create one of these, but I'm going to show you my two favorite ones. There's EPS and sales by Fred 6724 and also the earnings sales and volume dashboard by John Machow. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put both of those on my chart so you can see them. So this first one, let me bring this to the front. So it's in front of the bars. This is the EPS and sales dashboard by Fred. Get rid of this volume two, just so it's a little bigger and you can see it. So similar to market Smith, it has the date, the earnings and the change for each quarter. It also plots the arrows on your chart where those earnings took place. You can turn those off. Lots of different settings in here. It's a really nice indicator for that. From there, we have the earnings, sales and volume dashboard by John Machow. Bring this to the front as well. Again, really nice display it has the earnings, the change year over year, quarter over quarter data. And also some other important information like the up down volume ratio and market cap shares, average volume, stuff like that. So both of these are really nice earnings and sales dashboards to add on your chart. The last thing, and one of the most important things that market Smith does that it is probably the best platform for still is screening. However, I was able to get some very high quality screens in the new stock screener 2.0 for trading view. So I made a full video on that and I go over a couple of the screens that I like to use to find some high quality growth stocks and can slim type names. I'll put a link for that in the description. So you can go ahead and check that out. If you found this video useful or you like any of these indicators, please let me know if there's anything in market Smith that you want to see brought over to trading view, go ahead and let me know. And I will try my best to recreate that as well. So again, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you found this video useful, please go ahead and share it.